you can already see him. Um, yeah, as Laura just... already said, Michael is the Vice President at Wolf Summit, and I'm so keen to hear about not only how you guys managed to get like matchmaking to the next level, but especially, that's my favorite part, on how you switched to an online event within, I think it was only eight days, is that correct? Yeah, it was, um, yeah, exactly, it's Adriano. Jones. And thanks for the, the brief introduction and thanks for the invitation, for Laura, and the whole team. So yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's great to be here with you guys today. And uh, I can see you've got some very engaged uh, delegates, so that's always promising. Um, yeah, just so if I give you some of the background, Wolf Summit traditionally is um, biannual event in Warsaw, Poland. Um, we have around two and a half thousand people attend to the Palace of Culture and Science in Warsaw. Um, obviously, we were in preparation for our March edition. And yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. This is the, the breakdown of, so over the past five years, this is the total um, statistics that we have from the conference. Um, so the traditional event is a two day event. Um, whereby there's around 4,500 one-on-one -one meetings that happen. So we have 150 dedicated matchmaking tables, numbered and in different sectors. And startups and investors, as well as executives, will meet with potential business partners. So this is what we've, you know, these are the numbers we've gathered over the past four years. Um, so we, we're really quite happy with the performance. We were in preparation for the March edition. Then obviously disaster struck with COVID-19. Um, up until about two weeks before the event, we firmly believed we'd be able to host it in person, but with a thousand person capacity. And then eight days before the event, we were forced to go digital. Um, so yeah, it was a it was a whirlwind uh, romance, so to speak, but we pulled it off successfully. Thanks in part, well, thanks massively to the Hopin platform as well as Microsoft. As our valued partner, they provided the team's infrastructure to facilitate all of those meetings virtually. So in the, over the course of two days online, there was 2,400 meetings that took place um, inside Microsoft Teams. <clears throat> so yeah, that pretty much sums up the, the Wolf Summit and our preparation. Um, here we have the statistics from the virtual event, which was in March. So startups investors from over 40 countries representing 26 sectors um, 10 industries 70 percent of the participants were outside of poland which was you know a really great number for us because uh traditionally you know we would have around roughly 50 50 between polish versus non-polish um, startups so the fact that we um managed to bring that number up to 70 percent, we were really really happy with um, we had around 2,600 applications uh, for the event and 630 startups were selected to attend the virtual event. Um, and again, that's up almost one and a half times on, on the same event in the previous year. Can, uh, can, you, can you give a little bit more insights into the, the uh, matchmaking? I think it's called Wolf Match System. That you yes, so I could actually, how about I just um, show you a screen share yeah, of, the, be great, please. of the system? Okay, so. So as we already mentioned, Wolf Summit took it to, uh, to, to the next level in terms of, uh, if I got it right, for your next event, people could already start matchmaking four weeks prior to taking, to the, to the taking place of it. Is yeah, that correct? exactly. So awesome. that's correct. So basically when, um, <clears throat> What happened? So traditionally, this native solution we have was purely dedicated to in-person events. Um, so for the March edition, this system would activate on the morning of the event. And basically, people had pre-scheduled pre their meetings um, throughout the day, throughout the two days. So what would happen? You would go to your assigned meeting table and it would hyperlink straight into a Microsoft Teams virtual table. So subsequently, after the March edition, we've launched into a monthly pitching contest and we've activated our native solution round the clock 24 seven throughout the month. So essentially people can match make, you know, anytime they wish at the moment. Uh, so it's, you know, it's proving quite popular with startups trying to find their, um, you know, initial investors at this difficult time. 
So this represents our, our matchmaking. So we would have basically four different um, designations. So investor, startup, corporation, and executive. And you can, you know, if you're a startup, you can shortlist your ideal investors, send them a meeting request, um, and then a proposed time is suggested. And if the investor accepts, then you, you go ahead and have a meeting. Um, so that's how we handle the matchmaking element. And again, we've, you know, we've got extensive experience in this field. What we needed to do, obviously, is a large part of our event was focused on the um, content. So we enlisted the support of Hopin. So from the matchmaking platform, we would delegates would follow this tab, WS Live, and that would take them. Okay, this was our last edition in April, so the pitching contest. This would take them straight into the Hopin platform, and here we would have. Um, the content side of, of our event hosted. So, you know, we had valued partners such as Xpara. They actually um, provided access for free of the startups to join their acceleration program. Uh, we had Deal Room, Microsoft, Enterprise, Forum, MIT, and TechEU. So essentially what would happen, this is where the pitching contest would take place. So startups would have three minutes of pitching, followed by four minutes of Q&As from the judges. Um, so yeah, it pr pr proved to be hugely popular with our startups. Um, and again, it's as yeah. any startup knows at the moment, it's difficult to get exposure. So yeah, you know, we've, we've that, that, that worked with with Hopin because I know many people are are very keen to to learn uh, things about Hopin. So maybe your experience with it. So the the relationship with Hopin has gone from strength to strength. So after we hosted the first event in March. Mm -hmm. Hopping came back to us and said, look, guys, how did you manage that to such a high production standard within eight days? And I said, look, I'd, I'd love to take responsibility, but it's thanks to the team and our audio visual technicians. So yeah. after that, Hopping started, you know, you've got to remember that Hopping were actually pre MV. Well, they were at the MVP stage, so they accelerated their product offering um, massively to accommodate all of the de demand they had. So yeah. they reached out to us and said, guys, would you take on some of the technical support for third party customers? So we said, yeah, sure, more, more than happy to. And now I can actually show you a third party client that we are hosting an event for tomorrow. Oh, cool. So it's a Polish American guy, Polish based. He mm -hmm. organizes, traditionally he organizes gala dinners uh, for this business services sector in Poland. And we are assisting him tomorrow in hosting his first virtual event. Um, nice. And there's going to be more, more of them coming up. So it's actually live now. So I can actually give you a real in-depth rundown of hopping. So uh, the event kicks off tomorrow at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. um, when a delegate joins, they'll be taken to the reception area of hopping. Um, then on the left-hand side, you have stage. So when this goes live tomorrow, there will yeah. be presentations being streamed. Um, the sessions tabs, so this is your breakout area in Hopin. Um, and again, you can see here we've got yeah, those, those are like discussion tables, aren't they? So yeah. topic related yeah. discussion tables, yeah. Mike, you you also you also um, are pretty common for all your I mean you're you're having a really intense um, pitch competition, right? Yeah. So um, exactly. How how do you process this on that on that tool? Or okay, how so you when process, like how did you get your how do you get your people engaged when you're when you're doing that? Yeah, so when we host a pitching contest, um, I can show you if I go back to our own event. So in the sessions tab, we would have okay in the schedule. So we had multiple sessions. That, that were created so we had blue stage and pink stage and every hour we would have a different track so medtech would present and then followed by fintech mm -hmm. um so basically the startups would join the session and then we would use the audio visual team they would select some of the pitches and rebroadcast them to the main stage so essentially what that means is that a delegate would be in the sessions tab they may be in this particular breakout room, the 
this check focused um, stream. And then the audio visual team would grab the stream from here okay. and then broadcast it into the main stage via RTMP, RTMP protocol. And how, how many startups do you get through this process like in one, one, at one event? So we have 100 startups per month that, that we um, bring through this process. That, that's, that actually brings me to one thing that I also wanted to ask you. Um, mm -hmm. you. I mean, as you already had the discussion on that you switched so quickly, right? But um, you didn't only um, extend your matchmaking to four weeks before, you also increased the frequency of actually conducting your Wolf Summit event itself. What was the, the reason for that? Or was there a specific, a specific reason you made this decision? So the main reason that we, you know, what what um, compelled us to, to take that course of action was the sheer demand from the startups in terms of, you know, all of the live events that they were used to going to to attract investors or meet partners were just cold, yeah, in, in the mm -hmm. space of a few weeks just fell off, fell off the face of the earth. So there's a huge, um, there's a huge demand now from the startup community to try and gain that vital exposure at this time. So we felt that it was a great, you know, for us, we've hugely experienced in matchmaking and networking elements. So it was an easy decision just to, with the backing of the hopping platform, mm -hmm. give them that exposure on a monthly basis. Um, so yeah, that was the. Do you, do you think matching, matching in investors and startups is more difficult than matching like just normal participants on based on business interests or, or is it even easier because it's more clear what they're looking for? I think it's actually easier in a no, under normal circumstances. It's easier to match uh, startups with investors because they have mm -hmm. a very, you know, investors are very, very full fright mostly. Yeah? So it's a, most of the time you get a clear yes or no. And if a startup's mm -hmm. done their research, they, they should only be contacting, you know, viable investors that fit, you know, yeah. their investment thesis matches with the startup's sector. Yeah, um, bring, yeah, sorry. You go. Yep. Uh, no, but I just we... wanted to add it. <laughs> okay, I moderated. Laura, you're next. <laughs> no, okay, I just Laura, wanted to yeah. say that's like the, the, the pillars we were already talking about, right? The networking or the more goal oriented uh, matchmaking. And I think we are with the remote events, we're still in a market mm -hmm. that, is, that is developing or that is in the beginning of its actual potential. And I think yeah. over time, it will, um, it will, it will develop into into different um, sectors so that you have like concrete matchmaking tools which are focusing on speed on on a wider uh, to widen your 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 network or your contacts or you have specific matchmaking tools that that really focus on the the transformation between uh, startups investors or having an hr platform or somebody who looks for it or something like that or another focus that you that you are really applying for having a certain meeting which we also which is also quite common right so i think there is a lot to to develop or, or a lot that can develop and specify in this this field yeah absolutely i mean that i was actually approached approached by a vc in warsaw a few weeks ago to go through one of a, a potential portfolio companies offering and i must say some of the what's impressive about the new platform you know all the platforms now they're realizing they have to focus on the whole analytical side yeah so sponsors want to see not just people that have interacted at their booth in a call to action they yeah. want to see the whole data insights of who's passed through their booth who's actually viewed different material and some of the um, platforms now are offering absolutely very rich data following on from the event good point yeah super super important um, one other thing that, that we already discussed in our previous webinar is, mm -hmm. is the pricing, right? And I mean, today focuses engagement, but I think you can, you can actually connect it quite good. I mean, you have a really, um, interesting pricing model, let's say that. And, um, we were discussing about our remote events better for free or what price should you, should you, um, should you, should you offer? And what what's your opinion on it like do you think when you have a certain when you pay a certain price for an event that that increases the level of engagement or interaction 
between participants because they kind of already made an investment to actually attend the event? So is their willingness Absolutely. to interact stronger? Absolutely. I mean, we, um, so as I mentioned, we partnered with Xpara VC from Singapore during our last event. Uh, they were partnering with dozens of various, you know, um, non-for-profit organizations in Europe um, to fill their accelerator program for their COVID-19 focused accelerator. And the fact that we were taking a, a small payment of 49 euros from each startup that was pitching, they, you know, Paulina, who's the director for, for Europe, came back to me and said, look, Mike, we, the caliber of the startups we had via Wolf Summit was a lot higher than the, the ones that, that we sourced via the, the free, free events, so to speak. Um, so I, I think it's just a logical, you know, it's a logical result. Yeah, if you pay for, if you pay for the chance to pitch, you're going to be much more prepared for it. You're going to mm -hmm. put a lot of effort in. Um, you just, you know, I think free the, the free model is great, but it has its time and place. And in the current environment, the, the startups, especially that will thrive, are the ones that know, that know they need to make investments um, in their self, their team and their you know their marketing efforts efforts so that they can really you know meet with the the right investors and valuable partners Value. yeah definitely i think it's a difficult choice but uh, okay so i think uh, we have many questions that people want to get some answers to on slido um you guys yeah. can share your questions there and also upvote it so i will just go with the highest voted question right now um and that would be how to best integrate matchmaking and networking into the agenda for a remote conference and how to make sure that people actually show up. So two questions, Michael, first one, how to best integrate matchmaking and networking into the agenda? What do you say? Okay, so yeah, from my perspective, we had everything obviously with our native solution for pre-scheduling meetings, but during the actual event, the hop-in tool, the functionality allow it has a dedicated networking tab. So yeah, I again I'll share the screen quickly. I oh, know you're sorry you're sharing. No, okay, yeah. I'll just run through it. Basically, on the left hand side in Hopin, there's a networking tab. So as a delegate, you go into the networking tab, click I'm ready, and then you will have rapid fire automated meetings with fellow delegates. And as an organizer, you can restrict. The meetings by ticket class so you can say okay startups meet with investors investors can meet with startups and other executives for example um, and we would we would drive the engagement and we found that restricting the times that people could network to dedicated hours works a lot better than just having an open networking tab for the whole event um, so the MC, when it was five minutes before networking goes live, the MC would announce it on the main stage and drive the delegates to the networking tab. Good point. Good one. And also to the uh, to the, the second part, how to make sure people actually show up. <laughs> I think <laughs> this is hard to answer, right? You can never make sure people actually show up. You Let can you can send them push notifications to remind them, or you can also make them aware that if they don't show up. Uh, you or if they don't make it sign out so somebody else can take your spot or something but um that's also what we discussed before it's always like two sides of a coin you can offer it but it also depends on how much the the participants are really to get themselves in there and um yeah maybe still have to get used to it yeah i mean it's it is it's especially difficult i guess uh, for the free webinars and etc mm. to to ensure people turn up but if you do if you do have a paid model for your event it's much it's actually much easier because yeah, people want to feel, totally. feel like they yeah. yeah all right mark has answered perfect next one what are the best tools for speed dating uh, tinder is great i think <laughs> and how to stimulate the best those random encounters so also two questions guys you have to ask one question per well Never Mike, mind. did you make experiences with speed dating so far? Um, business so speed yeah, dating. Business speed dating. Essentially, yeah, essentially the um, the tool that I mentioned on Hopin is pretty much like speed dating um, for for your event, and it, it really facilitates it absolutely five five star. You know, is it time um, restricted? Like, if it you is, meet with yeah. someone, okay, yeah, then it's yeah. Sure. So 
again, that's all that's all um, stipulated by the organizer. So mm -hmm. during the first day of our event, we had a four minute limit and then we found that, OK, it's actually too long. Um, and we restricted it, lowered it down to three minutes for the next day. Mm -hmm. Cool. And how to stimulate, best stimulate those random encounters. Um, in my, my experience, the way to do that now is to have a clearly defined um, buyer persona from your delegates. So have multiple ticket classes and then restrict, you know, the ticket classes in who they can meet with so that, you know, it's a pretty safe bet that a startup wants to meet with an investor. So restrict those two, that, those ticket pairs so that they can only meet with each other. And then if you have, say, academia and media, um, obviously media can meet with everybody, but the academia may want to just meet with um, fellow academia, for example. But I have nothing like, to add on that one. Yeah. <laughs> so just, uh, just uh, for, for you to know, guys, uh, I think we won't be able to answer all questions right now, but we will address mm -hmm. all the questions and um, we'll probably then share them on LinkedIn. So if you're not following right now, uh, we will share all the answer to your questions on LinkedIn so nobody gets uh, no answer, just so you know. So we will be now going through the upvoted questions so we know that those are the most uh, eager ones to be answered. And the next one would be, how can you combine virtual and physical event elements, maybe also turn it into the image matchmaking point of virtual and physical event elements? So matchmaking so, hybrid. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a good question, actually. And mm -hmm. you know, the way that we would approach it when we eventually are allowed to host an in-person event again, um, I think having like a, a, a mix, say a round table mixed between live and online. So, you know, we could have the round table at the in-person event, but input, you know, delegates are invited to ask questions and put their hand up from across the globe. Um, you know, and that, I think that's the way to drive engagement. In, in the hybrid format yeah and, and so i think that's that's where we're where we're striving through or where mm -hmm. we're striving to when we're looking at the future um then it's not it's the the one or the other it's probably going to be like a combination out of both as we already i don't know how you did it with the wolf summit but we we um well we always favor we favor talk because that's the the platform we already worked with uh, before mm -hmm. we actually dive deep into this uh, remote event thing and um especially when you look at the matchmaking i mean that's that's the brilliant thing right that you you can get these filters in that you get can get the the interest and what are you looking for what do you offer and then you can actually meet right in person but have the match be conducted by the matching by the algorithm or by the matching interests yeah exactly and that's um that's it really comes down to your data input prior to the event and again making sure that the, the relevant parties are properly segregated so that they can have a, a seamless experience between the in-person event and and the online element of it okay because uh, so many are asking for uh, like very specific tools um mm -hmm. we currently shared a, a linkedin post with very different kind of uh, great tools for different uh, purposes. We will uh, include that as well in, 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 in an email and also make sure that share that as well uh, because it's, it's, it always depends, you know, so it's not very easy to say that tool is the best for this one. So everybody has to look into the tools and see and find their, their best fit. But what, what we can do is share all the tools we know out there. You guys are also uh, welcome to, to be sharing on and with that maybe the ones you have experienced very very good for those uh, specific um, settings so yeah just so you know um, so we don't uh, go around and uh, be answering just questions about what specific tool uh, to use when so okay that's a one with the two uh -huh. uh, I think the question about quite team members we already answered when you uh, when you were out Laura just so you know so <laughs> How to ask orchestrate remote matchmaking? How to orchestrate I, remote matchmaking? I think that's um, a mix of I how, don't how you what? prepare people to to do it, and of course also the tool you use, but also how you get the people to actively use the tool. Well, 
You want to go? I want to go? You, you first, Laura, please. <laughs> well, I, I think it's, it's like with everything in the remote event setup, it's, it's about the briefing and how much you guide people to, to, to the usage of the, the, the tool or the format that you offer to, to help them really get the most out of it, to, to explain them how easy it is. Like, I mean, yeah, like to, to guide them through the, the tool. So because if you, don't, if you don't understand it, if it's, if it's not user-friendly, then you will not use it, right? And if you don't know how, you won't either. And I think in a remote event setting, it doesn't matter whether it's matchmaking, whether it's a discussion table, or whether it's attending a keynote, brief your, audience, brief your participants, send like a really detailed um, upfront, or you also have it quite, quite often in the tools that you have like this little description on how you, you actually participate within this certain format. So you have like a short, short intro that you as I said, that you know exactly how to get the most out of the, the, the offered format. Absolutely. Come into it, Michael. No, I mean, as, uh, as Laura said, it's, uh, you know, I agree completely. It's uh, all about the, <clears throat> the, the problem we found with the remote matchmaking is having, you know, it's, You've got to remember, people are literally saturated at the moment with requests over for virtual events and yeah. LinkedIn requests. So, when you've got another remote matchmaking platform, you're you're fighting with grabbing their attention from LinkedIn, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Um, so that that's the biggest battle. It's just um, it's just grabbing your your users' attention and giving them regular updates on meeting requests, etc. So, via our own platform, <clears throat> we send. Uh, email reminders not when somebody gets a meeting request but we group them together and send up you know send information three times a week otherwise you can imagine an investor would be inundated with emails every every few hours with a different request from a startup mm. all right you guys want to know so much about specific tools uh, as i said we will be uh, sharing all the tools we know. I, I saw that many people are already chatting about different tools, Brella and Beer Room and everything. So as Michael already said, there's a lot out there right now and um, this market is, is growing and innovation is coming and tools are getting uh, better steadily. So uh, yeah, we will be keeping you up to date about the, the tools that are there. Um, but I think, as I said, it comes down to looking for your needs and uh, choose the best one for you maybe we do one uh, re remote webinar just about all sure. the 72 tools that they are out there yeah one of the most exciting announcements i saw today was around the um linkedin virtual events they, they're launching that so that's yeah yeah yeah, ah. cool. yeah so very, yeah very cool i mean yeah you know when you've got a one-stop shop like linkedin it's it's going to be interesting to see how that develops mm -hmm. And the, the, the funny thing is, it's not like an innovation to, you know, be a social network with a live streaming platform. And I think especially right now for LinkedIn, it's very, very interesting to, instead of us live streaming on Facebook, going, going on, on LinkedIn in, in the future, if we, we apply it. So let's hope they accept us and we can soon try our next webinar on LinkedIn Live. <laughs> that would be super. Yeah, we, 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 done, we went through the process a few months ago and it's really, you know, it's great to be able to host LinkedIn Lives interesting all right so um i would like to get a closing statement from you michael that's what we then always do with our guest um are remote events here to stay and if yes why do you think so um yes i absolutely believe remote events are here to stay and the reason i was discussing with laura uh, pre pre-stream is that <laughs> The environment now is going to be so difficult for sponsorship, gar you know, garnering sponsorship for your in-person event. Corporations are going to be, you know, the purse strings are going to be firmly zipped closed for the next few months for sure. And then even when things do re return to somewhat normality, um, I think the budgets are going to be severely restricted. And unless you're hosting an event for five to 10,000 people plus, I think it's going to be very difficult to to uh, gather enough sponsorship to make it economically viable. So the solution is that 
traditional competitors start forming a co-opetitions, as I, I like to phrase it. Um, so, you know, multiple events involved in the organization and planning and bringing in all of their combined communities to make it worthwhile for sponsors to be involved. Thank you. Great. Do you think so too, no. Laura? Well, nothing right. to add, no, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I won't do my statement first. again. <laughs> Time to dull down on, on your remote event uh, tools and hardware, a topic that we also probably will talk in the future about. Um, so thank you, thank you very much, Mike, for joining us. It was a thank pleasure. Thank you so much. I think everybody knows they can uh, link with you on LinkedIn if they have something to add on and some other questions. Always yeah, yeah, and I'll, uh, I'll drop a, um, a link into the, the chat if anybody wants oh, to awesome. attend yes, our please. pitching contest. Thanks a lot, guys, for your time. Thank you very much. Thanks for the invitation. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.